Well, we have reached that point in the year when people, for whatever reasons, begin to make silly lists of all the things they are going to do and try and do in the coming year. As we all know, most of these bite the dust. But there are some things I do know for certain, because they are regular events. They are as regular as the sun coming up. For the next two weeks, my gym will look like this. My local pool will look like this. But I have confidence that things will return to normal because I know that two weeks after that, my gym will look like this and my pool will have returned to normal. And we know this because by the beginning of February, apparently 80% of all New Year's resolutions have bit the dust. We have this profound difficulty in sticking to a list of what are often very, very simple aims and ambitions. And they, these are internally generated. What is more intriguing is that we have trouble sticking to externally generated protocols. Consider this. This is a, a, a list I put together of adherence rates for various conditions and the medication that goes along with them. And it seems to split itself naturally into two. The right hand side, we have what, what you would consider on this scale to be very, very serious conditions. We have acute lymphocytic leukemia, breast cancer, leukemia and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma at the right hand side. On the left, we've got hypertension in the US, depression, hypertension in the UK, asthma, type 2 diabetes and cholesterol. This measures the adherence rate of people to their medication. So this is externally applied to them. This is something they have to do. What is intriguing with this is not so much that people in the US have a very, very poor compliance rate for their hypertension medication compared to those in the UK. What is very, very surprising is the lack of adherence for life-threatening conditions that are life-threatening often in the short term such as the leukemias and breast cancer. Your expectation might be that if you are, let's say, door stopped on the street and somebody said to you, given this condition, would you take your medication? Your answer would be undoubtedly yes. And your expectation is that people would take it 100% of the time. But you can see here that the adherence rate doesn't even hit 70%. And you might think that that is profoundly strange. And in many ways it is. But my personal experience has been that I have been sitting in an oncology ward and I have heard nurses ring patients up and say, well, you've had two in the cycle. The cycle continues today, so you need to be here. And the general response is along the lines of, couldn't be bothered, I'm tired, I thought I only had to come once. The problem with adherence as a global phenomenon is that it requires discipline. It is also profoundly uncomfortable. Adherence to anything is painful. So we have a situation here where people's lives depend upon their adherence to various medication protocols, and they can't even manage even the worst cases to get to 70% adherence. What is interesting is when I looked at this data for rehabilitation, adherence rates for professional athletes, that is those who derive their income from their sporting ability, have an adherence rate often as low as 40% for their rehabilitation protocols following injury or surgery. Some 60% can't adhere to the routine when they're away from the rehabilitation specialist. In excess of 50% won't follow the risk protocols. And those, even those who've had serious surgery, have exceptionally poor adherence rates to what they're being told to do. So we have two situations. We have a population group whose lives depend upon their adherence, who can't do it, so you would expect their motivation would be high. You have a group 
whose livelihood depends upon their adherence and they cannot stick to their protocol, even though their motivation is high. So we have these two groups with profoundly high motivation who still cannot adhere to regimes they've been given, regimes that are essential to them. And this raises the question as to why this occurs. From my decades of looking at hundreds of trading plans, it seems to me that this falls into three generic categories. There's a lack of specificity, there's negative framing, and it's not relevant to the individual. When you look at someone's trading plan, you are essentially getting a window into the way they think, whether they think logically and coherently. Often trading plans will be very, very confused, and this will be a reflection of the way people think. They simply haven't sat down and thought at length about their trading plan because they don't realize that it's very, very much like a flight manual. It is profoundly specific. But if we look at each of these individually, the notion of lack of specificity, often I see statements which are broad and general, things like be profitable, buy things that are going up. Now, granted, I am fond of saying that trading is a very simple profession, that you buy things that are going up and sell things that are going down. But I have a very, very detailed definition of what those things mean. Likewise, you would think that the simple statement of be profitable would be fairly simple to articulate. But some people simply have this. Well, let's consider this. Let's assume that you have made 10%. You are, by definition, profitable. But what happens if the market's made 12%? You've actually displayed no skill. So this notion of being profitable requires some form of benchmarking. Everything you do, every statement you make, needs some form of qualifier, some form of addendum that actually explains the terms you are using. If we look at the notion of negative framing, many not only have the statement of be profitable, they also have the notion of don't lose money. But there's a problem with this, and it's a little bit like the old parable of saying to someone, don't think about a purple elephant. Well, what's the first thing you think about? The moment this is a statement within a plan, you instantly have a form of negative framing which inhibits your behaviour dramatically. Because the easiest way not to lose money is simply not to trade. And eventually, in extreme cases, that's where we actually end up. Because if you don't trade, you don't lose money. You're therefore rewarded for following your plan. And so you never actually trade. The notion of it being relevant to the trader is an important one. Why are you trading? All traders need a reason why. And this reason why must be immensely comprehensive, but not only does it need to be comprehensive? It also needs to be something that your subconscious can latch onto and work with. Simply saying to make money doesn't work, because I'm not entirely certain how the subconscious processes that. Because I don't think it's a value that we hold deep down. Now, your reason may be to spend more time with your family, to assist with your children's education, to do whatever. But it still needs to be a very, very comprehensive why. Because the why is the underlying motivation as to why you are doing these things. So if we come back to the, the simple notion of New Year's resolutions, if your New Year's resolution is to get fit, that's a much more powerful statement if you say, I want to get fit because I want to spend more quality time playing with my children chasing them around the park, kicking the football, hitting the tennis ball, going to the beach with them, whatever, all of a sudden it becomes a much more powerful statement. But the one point that is immensely important and which underpins all of this is that any form of plan, resolution, whatever, 
is a form of behavior modification. And behavior modification is very, very difficult. So my final point is to accept that even with the best will in the world, with the best intentions, you will find this very, very difficult. Not impossible, but difficult. And as they say, forewarned is forearmed. If you know in advance that something is going to be problematic, then you are actually ready for the pitfalls along the way. You're in a much better position than someone who thinks that all this is magically going to fall into place and that there will be no setbacks, there will be no problems, nothing will be an issue. Because one thing is certain, particularly in trading, there are always issues and there are always difficulties. But what is positive about that is that every trader has encountered exactly the same difficulties and exactly the same problems. So there is always someone out there who knows the answer to your problem.